Hello everyone and welcome to round 5 of this year's FIDE Grand Swiss. This is the most recommended game from round 5. It is Arjun Ergeisi versus uh, Rinat Jumabayev, Grandmaster from Kazakhstan. We've had him uh, on the channel quite a few times and uh, it's a really complicated game. I could have chosen maybe even seven pause the video moments i decided for two uh, and i think you guys will really uh, enjoy them so let's check it out uh, arjun has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4 we have pawn to e5 by rinat knight to f3 knight to c6 and now bishop to b5 dorui lopez is on the board knight to f6 and now d3 uh, countering the Berlin defense this way we have bishop to c5 and now pawn to c3 and here uh, castles and the d6 are the standard way of uh, handling this but here we have the immediate d5 and it's something that um, uh, is very standard when your opponent plays pawn to c3 as now the knight cannot come to c3 you are not afraid to bring your queen out early in the center of the board and okay we have e captures on d5 queen captures and now bishop to c4 attacking the queen this way queen to d6 and now pawn to b4 uh, immediately expanding on the queen side bishop to b6 and now knight to b to d2 and the position has been seen before we've seen moves like uh, castles uh, in this position also bishop to f5 was uh, played in this position for example uh, Caruana had it against Levon Aronian uh, he defeated Levon also Ante Berkic had it against Yuri Krivoruchko Berkic defeated Krivoruchko in this position but here we have bishop to g4 uh, and it is now as of move 9 already that we have a completely new game. So let's see uh, what's the idea. Uh, we have pawn to a4, threat being pawn to a5 to trap the bishop on b6. And now Rinat plays pawn to e4. It's a pawn sacrifice, but it will... A sort of mess up white spawn structure in the center and you want to get uh, some rapid developing moves in so d captures on e4 accepting the pawn and now pawn to a5 stopping pawn to a5 from white b captures knight captures putting pressure on the bishop here and bishop to b5 check pawn to c6 and the bishop back to e2 and now arena just castles queen side and you get this position where uh, Rinat is down a pawn, but uh, uh, he has all of his pieces already developed. The rook is coming to e8, uh, pretty much the last piece you have to develop. And the big question for Arjun is, can he castle here? And he decides that yes, he can. He can castle here. And even though there's quite a lot of stuff here on the d file, there's no uh, good way to capture the e4 pawn right away. So you have to prepare it. Rook h d8, but now Arjun plays pawn to e5. Okay. It's a double attack, but queen to e6, uh, this pretty much forces a queen trade. Or you could maybe keep the uh, queens uh, uh, in the game by something like knight to d4, or maybe queen to c2. Arjun decides that it's uh, uh, definitely time to trade queens now. e captures on f6, we have queen captures on e2, queen captures rook captures, and now f captures on g7. So if you count the material now, Arjun is just up two pawns. Of course, it's very unlikely that he will be able to keep the g7 pawn. So uh, he will be up one pawn. So what did Rinat get for this uh uh, early pawn sacrifice of his well he got the semi-open g file to be used for his rooks and he has the bishop pair so that uh we could say is a compensation in itself we have rook to g8 going after the pawn and now knight to d4 forcing the rook back we have bishop um Sorry, rook e to e8, uh, and now uh, bishop to a3. Uh, now with some ideas maybe of bishop to f8 to keep the pawn, uh, but of course Arinat will just capture it. We have rook f to e1, offering a rook trade, and now rook to d8. Interestingly, you want to go rook to g8, but uh, here it would just be premature after knight e4, going after knight f6. Uh, bishop to h3, let's say you go after the pawn, just g3, and the, the rooks aren't really all that helpful. Uh, on the g file so instead we have rook to d8 now the knight has to be careful otherwise this knight might hang on d2 uh, rook a to b1 putting pressure on the bishop and the bishop to c7 uh, we have rook to e7 for a very nice rook lift here and the bishop to h3 sort of uh, forcing Arjun to advance the pawn to g3 which he does and now pawn to b6 uh, we have bishop to b4 uh, and now knight to b7 getting the knight into the game we have knight to c4 uh, and here uh, how do you continue uh, this position uh, obviously by playing knight to c4 Arjun is inviting pawn to c5 but what is the idea behind pawn to c5 from white's perspective I will show it it's a really cool line uh, that uh, was not played in the game but you guys uh, need to know this because it um, 
uh, it, it is required to calculate this very precisely in order to understand uh, Rinat's next move. So here, uh, if you play pawn to c5, the idea is knight to b5. Of course, you go after the bishop here. Then the rook will block. You will play knight to a7 check. And now wherever the king goes, you have a check on c6. So king to b8, knight to c6 with check. And after king to a8, there is rook to e8 with check. You will, of course, block this with knight to d8. And now comes knight capture some b6 check. You sacrifice a piece here and after bishop captures you sacrifice another piece unfortunately for black the second piece cannot be accepted due to rook to b8 checkmate so you have to play bishop to c7 to stop checkmate and get your bishop out of harm's way but now comes bishop to e7 and this is how white wins this uh, you will now start collecting material. For example, rook g6 goes after the knight. You will start capturing. Bishop captures on d8. Rook captures on c6. Bishop captures on c7 with check from the rook, of course. King to a7. And now you will move the bishop. And the black king is a, is in a very bad uh, spot here. It will uh, uh, it will very likely get checkmated by the two rooks. For example, if you play rook captures on c3, bishop to e3 check. And now if you move, you get checkmated. Uh, so you will have to give up the exchange here and uh, white will now win this endgame. So that's the idea behind pawn to c5 right away. So why didn't c5 work? Well, because of that uh, whole maneuver with... Uh uh, the, the knight coming all the way to uh, a knight to b5, knight to a7, knight to c6. So what does Rina do? He plays rook to g6. And it is in fact the strongest move recommended by the engine as it will prevent the knight from accomplishing this maneuver. So okay, rook captures on f7 and now pawn to c5. Now he does it. So uh, has the rook uh, shifting to g6 really changed the scenario? Uh, let's see. Uh... Uh, we have knight to b5 uh, uh, by Arjun going for the exact same line, rook to d7 blocking, and now rook captures on d7. So uh, you can't play this as the c6 square is covered by the uh, by the rook, so that's not working. Rook captures on d7, bishop captures on d7, and now bishop to a3, getting the bishop out of harm's way, and now bishop to e6. And interestingly, here, by playing bishop to e6 and move 31, Rinat uh, blunders the game away, but Arjun doesn't pick up on it. What he did with bishop to e6 is not just attack the knight. He also prevents the rook from uh, the, defending the c6 square. So now knight to a7 is once again winning. Uh, point is that you will win the b6 pawn. It doesn't matter where you go. If king to d7, then just knight captures and b6 check right away. Bishop captures, rook captures, you're up two pawns, and the past a pawn uh, will easily decide the game. So that was in the position, but it seems that um, uh, he tricked him, and sometimes, yeah, you, you can very easily overlook such things. You played rook to g6 on the previous move to guard the uh, c6 square and then immediately you play bishop to e6 preventing the rook from covering the c6 square. Uh, what are you going to do? Chess is funny like that sometimes. So um, uh, Arjun just brings the knight back to e3. Now comes bishop to f4. Puts the pressure on the knight here as the g pawn of course cannot move. Uh, bishop to c1 and now knight to a5. Uh, we have knight to g2 attacking the bishop. Bishop back to b8. Nicely controlling the knight here. Uh, bishop Bishop to f4 now offering a trade of bishops and the bishop to b3. Now the the rook isn't uh, very uh, very strong on the uh, on the b file. Uh, bishop captures on b8, king captures, and now pawn to f4. So now you will have to start worrying about Arjun's past pawn uh, on the king side, and maybe or soon to be past pawns. So bishop captures on a4. Uh, Rinat minimizes the advantage to only a one pawn difference, but now pawn to f5. We have rook to g8. Now comes knight to e3. Uh, rook to d8, and now knight to a3. Uh, trying to activate the knight, but now bishop to b3, not allowing the knight the c4 square. King to f2, Arjun starts bringing the king into the game, king to c7. Now we have king to f3 and king to c6, both players just improving the positions of their kings, pawn to g4 now. And now if you give Arjun a few more moves, then the game is over, so you have to uh, figure out how to play this. Rook to d2, pawn to f6, and now king to d7. We have rook to e1. Uh, now, if the king uh, tries approaching, then you have all sorts of nasty discoveries, but just rook captures on h2. Now the material is equal. 
uh, and here we have pawn to c4. Knight to f5 is a um, is a better try uh, at, at the victory. Uh, Arjun plays pawn to c4, and now he sort of uh, lets um, Arena back into the game. He, we have rook to a2, going after the knight. Knight b5, and now knight captures on c4. So now uh, Arena for the moment is up a pawn. Knight captures on c4. Bishop captures and rook to e7 with check. We have king to c6, and now knight to a7 with check. Uh, we have king to d6 and now knight to c8 with check, forcing the king further back, king to c6, and only now rook captures on h7, equalizing in material. So now we have the past b and c pawn versus the past f and g pawn, uh, who is faster and also it's a knight against the bishop. We have rook to a8, forcing the knight to move, knight e7 check, king to d6, and now king to f4. We have pawn to b5. Uh, here, interestingly, King to e6 is a must move. I'm, I'm just going to show you why. King to e6 is a must uh, because now if you play pawn to g5, you run into this um, a very unfortunate rook to a4 move and the king doesn't really uh, have the option of remaining uh, on f4. Uh, there are just you know two good discoveries here uh, as the rook might be captured. Also, it's going to be easy to stop the pawns. Also, you cannot just start advancing as the, the, the f pawn will fall. So you play king f3, the rook just follows you. Rook a3 check. If you go here, then even bishop to g4 with check and the king will not be able to escape checks. If king f4, rook to f3 check even. And now if you, if you go here, you're under the mask of the bishop and if you go here then bishop d3 check picks up the rook you trade rooks of course captures captures but now the um, pawns will not be able to advance and it's an easy draw however after king to f4 b5 was played and now there is one huge difference here feel free to pause the video and try to find the uh, only winning move for arjun uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to f5 with check. g5 uh, pretty much uh, transposes into the same line, but knight to f5 check uh, is just very forcing and there's no way to avoid it. The point is that now king to e6 uh, does not work because of rook to e7 check. And now after king captures on f6, there's g5 check, king to g6 and knight to h4 with check. King to h5 and rook to h7 will be checkmate. So this is what uh, Arjun found uh, when he played this knight to f5 check move. So you have to move the king back, king to c6, and now just g5. Now it's a race, but white got a couple of very valuable moves in. So pawn to b4, pawn to g6, and pawn to b3. And now, uh, interestingly, the only winning move is rook to h1. Arjun hurries it up with pawn to f7, but now it's actually a draw. Pawn to b2. Rook to h1, and here bishop to a2 was played. Uh, probably, of course, uh, Rinat saw that bishop captures on f7 is a draw. Uh, I imagine he also wanted to win this game. Uh, to quickly show why, bishop captures, g captures, and rook f8. You trade uh, uh, bishop for the two connected pawns, and now you will not be able to do anything with this pawn. Simply c4, and if king to e3, you're going to uh, cut the king off, and now you have to give up the, the queen in order for the king to approach. King to d4, you'll play rook to d8 with check something king captures and now you will uh, pick up this pawn and that's pretty much it something like rook h8 okay you maybe paralyze them a little bit king b3 and now even b1 uh, with check you force the rook to move rook captures knight and it's a draw uh, by soon to be maybe insufficient material uh, but okay bishop to a2 was played i imagine Rinat was still going for the win and now comes king to e5 not g7 if g7 then uh, again bishop captures on f7 is enough uh, but after king to e5 this is now a very very important uh, square for the king point being that if you play bishop captures on f7 now uh, then g captures on f7 and rook f8 are made uh, met with knight to h6 and now the king cannot get into the game you have to play c4 king to d4 and the pawns will not be uh, posing any threat to the white uh, rook or king so after king e5 king to b5 was played trying to get uh, uh, that pawn down the board uh, but now knight to d6 with check king to b4 and knight to e8 also uh, preventing the the rook from controlling the f8 square now f8 is coming but now bishop captures an f7 G captures and now rook to a1. Uh, 
crazy crazy position uh so what do you play here well rook to h4 with check let's prevent black from taking the free rook first king to a5 only move that still keeps black in the game and now f8 with check and now interestingly uh this is still a draw but only if you find the precise idea and it's not easy to find a precise idea here so just for fun feel free to pause and do not lose this game with black while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not being greedy for the queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, first one check is needed. And to give you an example why, now after the king moves, you will bring the queen into the game, b1 queen. And now after white starts checking you, let's say queen captures on c5, uh, it doesn't really do anything. You will block with the queen and that's it. You are perfectly fine. And if you go for knight to d6, which is the original move that was used in the game, uh, but not in the proper move order, then queen to d3 check, king to c6, queen to a6 check, king to d5, and uh, well, it's just going to be a draw by repetition. The rook nicely cuts off the king from escaping anywhere. However, in the game, Rinat hurried it up. He played b1 queen right away. And now with the rook stuck on a1, uh, it's not really the same. Here, uh, we have knight to d6, and there's just no good way. Now, if you try the same idea of queen to e1 check, uh, you, you can just block rook to e4. And after a couple of more checks, queen g3 checking to d5, queen to d3 check, king to c6 and now queen to a6 check you just escape via the d7 square king a7 and now queen to e king to e6 uh, much much different than if you had the rook on e1 this whole time so in the game queen to b2 check was played now comes king e6 we have queen to e2 with check king to d7 and he was in this position on move 68 that rina jumabayev resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here a few more moves and the black gets checkmated it doesn't really matter what you try you you bring the rook into the game it's basically a mate into queen d8 check only move king to a6 or king to b6 doesn't really matter but um or even better, queen to d8 with check. This leaves uh, only one square uh, available to the black king as the queen, knight, and the rook cover everything. So once you move it, now rook to a4 is checkmate. So, I mean, everything wins, but uh, it's also very easy to just win on the spot. Uh, so, yeah, very nicely done. Very, very complicated game. It could have gone either way, but it was always Arjun who had um, uh, winning chances. Uh, and then in the end, he he took it. He uh, Rina gave him some three chances, and then in in the end he had one more opportunity but here it's so hard not to bring the queen into the game like play a rookie one first and uh okay it does come with check but still you know it's a very hard hard to uh, make a decision like this uh but yeah i imagine Rinat also wanted to win this game uh, and in the end uh, he lost it and a great win for arjun erigasi who is now one of the leaders of the tournament if you guys are interested in the pairs for uh, round six here they are so uh, un uh only players with four points are uh, andre yesipenko hikaru nakamura and arjun erigasi yesipenko will be facing nakamura on board one yu yang yi will face uh erigasi on board two on board three caruana will face Face Evgeny Nair, then Artemiev Firuz, Jayakubov Kaimer, Vidit Niman on board six, Sevian Sindarov, Pretke Shankland, Vojtashek uh, Erwin Lamy, who is having an incredible tournament, and uh, one international master, even on the first ten boards, uh, international master uh, Jean Makanov, also from Uzbek, uh, also from Kazakhstan, uh, will be playing uh, against Anish Giri. Uh, so there we have it, a uh, bit of an extra info with the game. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank John Gear Law Office, LLC, Mario Milano, uh, The Bruders on Spotify, Stephen McCann, and Chess uh, Better Than League for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.